Hi girls, this is Willa. I am so excited to see you all again this week. Kayla and I enjoyed seeing all of the creative ways you came up with to help our garden fairy get safely across the canyon. You all did a great job. Are you ready to continue on our journey as citizen scientists? Today we are going to use our observation skills to discover nature's colors through a color walk. This scavenger hunt will help us observe more about the natural colors around us. Are you ready to get started on today's adventure? Alrighty then, let's go. Hey Daisies, thanks for joining Willa and me today for the fourth session in our Investigation Await series. My name is Kayla Roloffs with Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines. Will and I had such a fun time looking at all of your projects from last week. A huge thank you to Emerson from Troop 40725 in Brighton, Michigan, and Cheyenne from Troop 70322 in Canyon Country, California. Before we begin today's activity, let's get started with our Girl Scout Promise and Law. Let's do the Girl Scout sign and we can get started. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Last week, we got to practice thinking like engineers and we worked to solve a problem. This week, we're going to practice making observations with a walk to find all of the colors in nature. For this activity, you will need a notebook or other paper markers, crayons, or whatever else you like to draw with. And then you're gonna need an adult or an older partner to walk with. Let's start off by thinking about our favorite color. Do you like bright colors or do you like dark colors? Feel free to write them down or color it on your page. Now, try asking someone else in your house what their favorite colors are and make a note of that on your paper as well. The more colors that you can find before we go out, the better. Here we are in a beautiful English garden. Color is one of the most basic ways we can observe and describe what we see. For example, if I said, these are my favorite flowers in this garden, would you know which ones I was talking about? Not necessarily, but if I said, the purple ones are my favorite flowers in this garden, that helps narrow it down for us to focus on a few options. Take a look around. What colors do you see? On other different sheet of paper, list three colors you think are most easy to see in this garden. Don't worry there is no right or wrong answer. It is simply what your eyes focus on as you look around. There are many options from the green grass to the blue sky to the red flowers. We see colors based on the way it reflects or emits light. This is why colors look different on a sunny day than a dreary one. Are there any colors that you don't see? Some colors are harder to find in nature. Let's see if we can find them on our color walk. Once you have your list, let's take a walk. If the weather isn't cooperating today, feel free to just walk around the space that you're meeting and we can try going outside on a different day. We're gonna try to find all of the colors on our list, sort of like a little scavenger hunt. Feel free to turn it into a game of I Spy as well. Nature is full of different colors, especially at this time of year. Now that it's spring, flowers and plants are starting to grow and show off all of their beautiful colors. Using our eyes, let's play a game of I Spy. Do you know how to play that? I will say a color to describe an object and you will try to find it. Doesn't that sound like fun? Alright then, here we go. I spy something the color red. Did you find the red flowers? I spy something the color white. 
That's right, it's the clouds. It is a lovely day to be outside. I hope it is where you are too. I spy something the color gray. I was looking at the fountain in the middle of the garden. There are so many different colors for us to find. What other colors can you find? While you're on your walk, think about the different colors that you observe and how they make you feel. Colors are often tied to feelings, such as yellow feeling warm and happy, and blue maybe making you feel sad. This doesn't mean that those colors make you feel that way. They can make you feel lots of different ways. Once you're back home, look at your list of colors and see how many you were able to find. Were you able to find most of them? Where did you see them? Was there anything that surprised you? The way different colors affect emotions depends largely on a color's brightness and shade. Warm colors, like red, orange, and yellow, often evoke feelings of happiness and energy, while blue, green, and purple are considered cool colors and are usually calming and soothing, but can also express sadness. When colors combine in one space, it helps balance out the emotions you may feel from just one color. Are you ready to go on your color walk now? If it's nice weather, take an adult and go outside. Otherwise, you can walk around your home or look out a window. Pay very close attention to the colors you see around you. Our takeaway activity for this week is going to look a little bit different. As Girl Scouts, we like to give back to our community when we can, so we are going to start working on our Take Action project. Usually we brainstorm together to come up with our own project, but we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. A great way to give back to our community during this COVID-19 pandemic is by writing letters to people in nursing homes, senior residences, and assisted living facilities, including the staff and the caregivers. Girl Scouts USA has started a letter writing service project to help send your good thoughts to those members of your community. Here's how it works. Your girl and anyone else who wants to participate can draw a picture and write a letter using the tips provided. Look up your local assisted living centers and find out how they would like their letters delivered. You can collect and deliver them all as one big group, just making sure that you're still following your local social distancing guidelines. Or you could have the girls mail them individually, or you could even deliver them via email. For the adults, take a picture of your letters and post it to your social media using the hashtag Girl Scouts Give Back and tag at Girl Scouts. Many people are feeling isolated during this time when they can't see family or friends, so this is a really great way to share some love during this tough time. As Girl Scouts, we look for meaningful ways to help our community. This national letter writing project is a great way to join together with Girl Scouts across the country. To share your good thoughts with these community members, it's like a long distance hug. Today, you were able to think like citizen scientists by making careful observations about the world around you. How often do you really stop to look at all of the colors that are out in nature? Willa and I hope to see you again next week when we get to show off what we've learned about making observations. Cheerio girls! We'll see you again next week.